Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you guys can see, we are in the third bay right now, but we'll be heading outside shortly to start working on the truck. You guys might be wondering, well, what are we going to be working on the truck? Well, I've just got a pile of parts here just to kind of go through and we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, the Michi Moto Box, we'll get into that in a separate video, but we do have a water pump. We've got some gaskets and some tools. And I actually have a couple more parts that are on order, but I don't know when they're going to get here. They're, they're on back order, so... This might end up being like a two or three part video just because, you know, we got all the initial parts first, but we're going to go ahead and have to get started with what we have. We should be able to, you know, get everything finished up. And then when those last parts come in, that'll just be a separate video. So, but what we have here is a new water pump. Like I said, uh, it's going to be AC Delco part number 252994. So that's going to include the gaskets, the cover, the outer cover, the inner cover, and the impeller for the water pump itself. Uh, AC Delco does sell a number of different versions. You can get just the impeller, you can get the back cover, the front cover. And so it's just kind of uh, just a different way you, you can order. So I think that was about $120. Uh, we also got some tools. Uh, we got the Mishimoto parts. And uh, yeah, so basically why we're going to be replacing the water pump is... It hasn't completely failed yet, but I believe it's on its way out. Because as you guys know, with the Duramax, there is a weep hole on the water pump. I'll try to show a picture here of it. It was really dirty, and also the hose underneath that weep hole also had a bunch of orange coolant fluid all over it. And as you guys can see behind me, I actually do have the front uh, tray and the middle tray. And those are basically just to protect you from hitting anything off-roading. But, you know, with those removed... I have not had any huge puddles under the truck. But what I have noticed over the last maybe like eight months or so, I've had these really little puddles, little little puddles underneath the truck. Like, and it only shows up when it rains. So what I think is happening is we, we have a very slow leak coming out of that weep hole or it's the bottom hose, I'm just not completely sure, uh, on the truck. And you know, since we're going to go ahead and replace everything, the hoses, the pump, the thermostat when they get here that's actually one of the back order items but let's go ahead and get all this stuff opened up like i said i'll keep the mishimoto to a separate video because it's it's related but it's not but i did want to show you all the tools and everything else that we've ordered for the swap here's the water pump like i was saying we got the front housing the back housing the impeller that's inside of the water pump as you guys can see it is an ac delco part number so this is all 100% brand new. So that's the first part. Here are the gaskets that came with it. It's the main gasket. Then you've got these two, uh, look like I saw a recessed, yeah. O-ring goes there. Uh, the orange gasket goes around the pump itself. And I believe this gasket might go here. And that actually connects to the oil cooler. So. The AC Delco pump does come with gaskets, however, there's a caveat to that. I did see a lot of people complain saying that the gasket, the orange gasket, that main gasket that connects the block to the water pump, that that gasket is actually wrong. So, I already went ahead, oh and the other complaint was the water pump does not include any studs. Since I didn't want to reuse anything and I didn't want to be SOL on not having a gasket, I actually already went ahead and ordered the proper gasket. It's going to be part number 94013304. It's the gasket part number. And then the studs, which you guys can see right here. Here's the stud. So the part number for the stud is going to be 1161-1145. You're going to need two of the studs. And like I said, we may not end up needing that black or orange gasket. But like I said, I saw complaints, people saying, hey, this didn't come with the proper stuff. I actually think I saw that on the comments on Amazon, which is not 100% sure, but I saw that I was like, you know what, let's go ahead and place the order. And I actually got those the studs in that gasket from my online parts dealership. Got it in like a couple days, so they actually came sooner than I did the, than the water pump itself, so that's pretty cool. Now to help save time, we did have to spend a little bit of money, but I did buy a set of Duramax water pump basically tools. This from Merchant Automotive, that's going to be part number 10350. That is actually for the Duramax and Allison whatever. 
This is actually the clutch fan wrench. And then the second tool we actually bought was from Lyle. This is part number 22100. So this is gonna be the flywheel locking tool as well as the socket. It's a 36 millimeter socket to uh, actually take the crank bolt off. So that's kind of the parts introduction, the tools introduction to this project. Now we're gonna go ahead and actually drain the coolant out of the truck. But for that, you guys might remember I usually use a underbed storage from uh, Walmart, you know, there's the cheap one. But I actually kind of went to Walmart last night and bought a new one. And uh, this one's from Hefty. I think it's supposed to hold like 40 some quarts of fluid or whatever. And uh, yeah, so I do know there is like 32 quarts of coolant in the truck, something like that. So we did, you know, I do have, I am fully prepared to hopefully capture all that coolant. So we'll undo the drain plug. That'll drain into that bucket. Then you guys can see that we picked up our uh, coolant concentrate and our distilled water. All right, guys, we've already gotten started on the water pump removal. Basically, all we're doing right now is disassembling the truck. You see that we actually have part of the fan shroud that's held in. Behind there is the TCM cover because I do have an Allison transmission. Then right here is actually the hood closeout panel, if that's what you want to call that. Uh, radiator closeout panel, whatever you want to call. And those are simply just removed with some push pins. So I decided not to film that because like I said, it's just push pins, remove those. And it should get you ready to actually start removal of parts off the truck, like actual hard parts. So you guys will see, we actually do have access to the clutch fan nut assembly. So we will use our tool that we picked up from Merchant Automotive. We'll use that to knock that off. You'll also see we've got plenty of room for, you know, the water pump swap that we're gonna have to do. And then eventually, after we get this fan clutch assembly off, we're gonna have to go down there on the bottom and get the uh, harmonic balancer nut loose. But, you know, <laughs> we got a little bit before then. Oh, and uh, here is the TCM. If you do have an Allison transmission Duramax, uh, just simply take it out of its cover and kind of put it up out of the way. And uh, right there, it's sitting there without any issues. So let's go ahead, we'll get our tool, get our hammer and uh, try to spin this nut off counterclockwise. So uh, going toward the left, that's the way we'll be hammering it. All right guys, you will see, do you have the flywheel lockout plate in place? My truck actually never came with that shield that goes in there. I mean, at least I've never had it in the seven years I've owned the truck, but you will see the little blackout plate right there that's fed you know forward in front of the torque converter and it is locked into the flywheel or whatever you want to call it flex plate you know so that's basically going to lock the transmission in place and it ain't, ain't going to move anywhere so all right guys we actually did manage to get the uh clutch fan off using the merchant automotive tool that we kind of showed earlier did it a little bit differently than how they recommend i actually just ended up putting some half inch drive ex socket extensions in there and i have this uh, swivel set from harbor freight that fit perfectly inside the tool and then i just put you know a couple extensions on that then i ended up hitting it with my three pound sledge i think it says three there and just hitting it like this obviously being careful not to hit the alternator also we don't want to hit the oil fill cap or the ac compressor but i just hit it probably five or six times and it did knock it loose and you guys will be able to see to where this is fully loose. So let's get the tool removed and, well, <laughs> tool just kind of fell down. That's all right. Get the tool out and then we'll just be able to spin this clutch fan off of, not the water pump, but the water pump pulley. Is that what we want to call that? We'll uh, get this off, get the clutch fan out, and we'll be able to get to the harmonic balancer bolt, crank bolt whatever you want to call that. All right guys, for the next part, we're gonna need our 36 millimeter socket, a breaker bar. I have an extended half inch drive socket, as well as the handle from my floor jack. So we're gonna need that to try to get the crank pulley loose down here. You guys can actually see that bolt down there. And another kind of buzzkill, the uh, 36 millimeter socket that came with the Lyle kit Unfortunately, it's a three-quarter drive. I don't have any three-quarter inch drive anything. All my sockets are half inch or three-eighths. I may have one adapter, but honestly, guys, I probably haven't used it in 
probably almost 10 years if I have that socket or that adapter. It's probably long gone. So we'll go ahead and try to get that broken loose and we'll get that bolt out. All right, guys, I did manage to get the bolt actually busted loose with that setup that we have. And unfortunately, I forgot, I actually do have a 90 degree impact. This is from Milwaukee. I'm not sure if I've done a video on this one or not, but it is a 90 degree impact. And uh, so we've already broken it loose. I don't think this would have broken it loose, but I will be able to use this to get that bolt out of the crank, so. All right, so we should be able to go ahead and get this 90 degree impact. Oh yeah, that worked mint. All right, cool. Well, let me get this out. I can't do it one-handed. Oh, maybe I can. All right, well, great. That tool worked awesome. I don't remember the max torque that this thing produces, but I'm, I'm sure as hell it's not the 260 foot-pounds that we're gonna need to put you know, the bolt back. But So now we got the bolt out, we can slide the harmonic balancer out. All right, so you guys can see we did get the harmonic balancer off. You will see the the, the Woodruff key, whatever that's called, the key on there, the, the harmonic balance around the Duramax is keyed, unlike the LS motors. You can also see that we got the accessory belt off. I just put my half inch extension, put it on the tensioner, popped the you know belt off the tensioner that came off. And that harmonic balancer literally just pulled straight off. There's no, uh, it's not press fit like the LS motors is, kind of like the Corvette and the SS. So that thing literally just slid right out. And when we, Go to install that back in we're gonna have to make sure we line up that key you know on the crank as well as the pin that's on the crank shaft itself so uh that's pretty much it for tearing down the front end uh now we actually have to open up the cooling system we're going to use our bucket method all right guys we have started draining the coolant well actually we've probably drained most of it now one thing is this whole system is pressurized so I actually did not get much drainage out the drain hole until I actually opened up the radiator reservoir up here, pulled the cap off. As soon as I busted that cap loose, it started gushing out the bottom. And you guys will see there is a little bit of a mess around the tire, around the drain pan. But like I said, we probably caught 99.9% .9 of all the coolant. Now it's kind of the purpose of buying that under bed storage thing from this brand is hefty you know we picked that up at walmart all right guys now we're actually going to be working on the removal of the water pump pulley assembly you know, kind of like we said this isn't the actual water pump but it is the pulley for the water pump there's a bunch of 13 millimeter bolts i think there's two or three around it so we got to remove those there's also an electrical connection over here remove that i believe that's some kind of coolant temp sensor so you're going to want to take that off and uh, also, you will see that we have popped this hose loose on top of the water pump. And there's an O-ring in there. We will be replacing that. But we also have to get, I don't know if you guys can see it, but we also need to get this little rubber hose disconnected there. That is that, I actually have a replacement for this hose, but it's on back order. This is the, I believe the turbo coolant drain, or whatever you want to call it. You know, basically the cooling system for the turbo. So we gotta disconnect that as well, and we'll be able to get this water pump pulley off. All right, so we did get the pulley out. As you guys can see, it's no longer here. It's over there by the fan shroud. Those are actually 14 millimeter bolts, not 13 millimeter bolts. All right, you're gonna see the hose clamp is loose on the bottom half of the water pump. Actually, that hose clamp is actually molded into the upper radiator hose, so don't expect that thing to come off. So we're actually end up using these Harbor Freight uh, needle tools to try to get the, uh, you know, that that edge of the hose off the bottom of the water pump. Like I said, we've got replacement hoses, so, so we're not too worried about if we screw up the rubber at all. And another thing I want to say, there is a bunch of grime on the bottom of this heater hose. So we may actually not have a bad water pump at all. It might it may have been this hose all along. But since we've gotten this far, like I said, we're going to go ahead and replace the water pump and the coolant hoses as well so let's get this bottom hose off and then we're going to attack the oil cooler uh, assembly all right so you can see the water hose is actually fully removed from the bottom of the water pump and actually guys that popped off pretty easily all i had to do is stick one of those picks down there and it you know it busted it loose and it came right off so that's off and i will say this i'm very glad 
I had my tub down here with all of the coolant in it because probably like I said 99% of that coolant that was in that lower hose ended up pouring right into the tub down below and I did end up scooting a little bit closer to me and then I pushed the coolant hose down even more and dumped the rest of the coolant into the uh, tub. Alright guys, you can see the water pump is almost ready to come out. I did take the three 12 millimeter bolts off the front. There's also those two 12 millimeter bolts that I was telling you from the back. I don't really have a good picture of them, but I'll try to include a screenshot of that here. They're basically on the side and uh, you've got to get it from the side of the truck. So basically, I think we've got all of the hardware out and the water pump should be ready to come out. Oh. I did kill this line right here. I think I've got some hose, uh, even though it's on back order, I think I've got some hose that would work there. We'll have to see. But uh, yeah, so the water pump should be ready to come out and uh, it should just pull straight out toward you. So like I was saying, the water pump should just come out. I'm just gotta pull it toward me and uh, hopefully Well, we definitely have a uh, I'm glad I had the bin down there. Probably caught most of that, but it didn't catch all of it. I can tell you that right now. But basically, what we just did was we broke the seal between the block and the water pump, and whatever was still in the block behind the water pump all just came rushing out. So, yeah, this should pull straight out, hopefully. Oh, well, there you go. There is the water pump. <sighs> what a pain. And it's not it's not seized or anything it is still spinning so uh yeah now we got that out i need to make sure i didn't get any coolant in the oil if we did let me drain the oil here i don't think we did but we may have just pulling this out so let's go ahead and check that all right guys unfortunately we did get a little bit of coolant inside the motor when we pulled the pump off not really anyone's fault it's just kind of the way it is this tube has not come out of the thermostat housing. If I had, was able to get that out, probably should have uh, tried to pull down on that harder and you know that would have given us more room to come straight out. But when I pulled the pump out, it kind of turned a little bit and there's still a bunch of coolant inside the water pump itself. So not a lot, just a little bit of coolant got down into the motor. And uh, some people might say that's fine and send it, but you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead drain the oil when we're done you know we're not going to start the car just yet i'm going to drain the oil we'll replace that new oil new coolant should be good to go with tearing the truck apart i think i've identified what the problem maybe two potential problems what was going on with why why we were losing just a little bit of coolant not a ton but just a little bit i think one was that lower radiator hose that radi radiator hose was pretty easy to pop off like i just had to push down a little bit and the whole thing flew off. Uh, when I was loosening the hose clamp on that radiator hose, it had a bunch of gunk on it. So, you know, I think that's potentially one spot it was leaking. The second spot is actually that back pipe that connects to the back of the water pump. And I think someone just went in there and they didn't want to spend the, you know, replace the gasket, but they took the time to take it apart. And they just put a bunch of RTV sealant on there. So there's RTV sealant, there's the gasket, and that was about it. So. You know, I don't know, uh, I can't, you know, be 100% sure that were the two problems for the leaks, but those definitely appear to be contributing factors to our leak. So now that we're fully done disassembling the truck, I already cleaned off the gasket surface for that back pipe. Uh, I am going to spray, spray a little bit of brake clean on the gasket surface for the water pump, and then we'll be able to go ahead and put the new water pump on. All right, guys, as you can see, we have the water pump in my hand and we have fully prepared this to be installed. You guys can see the new orange gasket that came with the water pump. I do have that black one just in case we do need it, uh, but this one seemed to fit fine. So we're going to go ahead and try it with that one. I did install the new gasket on the bottom and you will see we did install those new studs that I ordered separately. And like I said, I saw complaints about, you know, the water pump not coming with those studs. So just went ahead, ordered them, put them in. And uh, that way we don't have to deal with trying to take 15 year old studs out of you know crusty aluminum then they may not want to come. So the pump is officially ready to go in the truck but like I said I still need to do a little bit of cleanup and the other thing is 
I have not installed the gasket here. One thing I noticed, the AC Delco gasket came with like a, not a steel gasket like the old one was. This one was kind of like a composite gasket. So this gasket right here. So that is a little bit different than uh, what I ripped off the old one. So, all right guys, so the water pump bolts are gonna torque down to 15 foot pounds. And uh, I was using a bigger wrench to tighten this down so they might already be torqued. Yep, two, then the last nut. Yeah, we're all torqued. So basically the bolts that hold the water pump to the block are 15 foot pounds. And the bolts that connect all the pipes, so from here to here, and the pipe on the bottom, those are gonna be 18 foot pounds. All right, so as you can see, we did get the top pipe mounted. I haven't torqued that down yet, but remember that is gonna be 18 foot pounds. Did put a temporary rubber hose on here. All right guys, as you can see, we got most of the components back in the engine bay. So we got the harmonic balancer down on the bottom. I torqued the bolt down to 260 foot pounds on that. We put the water pump pulley in. We torqued all those bolts down to 18 foot pounds. And then as you guys can see, I did replace that hose that I destroyed. That's actually the turbo coolant drain or feed. I'm not really sure which one that is. That's torqued down. And then the bolts on top of the water pump, those are torqued down to 18 foot pounds. So we're pretty much done on the engine bay side. The only other thing I really have to do is actually put the uh, lower radiator hose in. And now that I'm looking at it, I might do that now. And the reason I say that is because everything's still kind of apart and we still have room. If I put the fan back in, if I put the shroud back in we'll lose a lot of room so you guys will see the hose video in a separate video but you know just know that after you put almost everything back together in the engine bay that's pretty much gonna be it really the only thing else that we have to do on the water pump is actually going to be the oil cooler side of it and that's that pipe that connects from the oil cooler to the back of the water pump there's you see those two nuts by the screwdriver right there those are two we have 12 millimeter nuts that we're gonna have to put back on. We're gonna go through the side of the car like we said earlier. Tighten that up and that actually will be it for the water pump. The hoses and all that stuff, you guys will see that in a separate video. Uh, that actually will be next because that's kind of what we got to do next on the car. So that's pretty much gonna be it for the water pump video. Uh, everything else is pretty much gonna be wrapped up on the hose video. That's gonna be the Mishimoto radiator hoses. That'll be in the next video. But for the water pump, like I said, we just got those two nuts on the back the water pump that's gonna be about it uh overall i've been out here for about four hours and i did take like an hour break so i've really only been out here for like three and a half maybe four hours something like that and uh yeah that's is what i saw online between like three to six hours obviously we're not done yet but you know like i said we got a separate project going on and we'll wrap that up in the next video um the thing with this, you kind of have to take a couple extra things off. I did end up taking off the boost tube. That's, I'll show you that up here. That is going to be that tube right there. I did end up just connecting that. That just gave me a extra like half inch to get a ratchet wrench around those 12 millimeter nuts on the back side of the water pump. Just moving that tube down just a little bit is what is all that I needed. So I've had to do that a couple times. I had to take off one of the idler pulleys, uh, the boost tube, uh, the fan, obviously, the shroud, all that stuff. Just kind of stuff like that. That's kind of the thing you do, that you're going to want to watch out for. And then, obviously, the thing that saved us the most time were the tools we bought. So if you guys like this video, hit that like button. If you want to see more truck content, especially us wrapping up the project with those coolant hoses, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Turn on your bell notifications. And if you guys want to help support the channel, I did get most of my tools online and the parts. Uh, about the only thing I didn't get on, on Amazon were actually the studs So for the water pump. I'll include the part numbers down below for that. We might be able to find that on Amazon. I'm just not sure. I didn't see it last time I looked. And yeah, that's pretty much going to be it. Thanks, guys. Have a great one. Yeah.